Can you guess how many theories of the Titanic sinking exist? Right, loads, including a theory of my own, which I'm going to share with you today. And then you can decide which one seems most likely to you. One Piece Theory The very first version of the events was the One Piece Theory. It's very simple and basically claims that the sinking happened without any breakups. 2.15 a.m., the ship collides with an iceberg. 2.18 a.m., the lights go out. The ship reaches an angle of 45 degrees and then quickly begins its final plunge into the ocean depths. 2.20 a.m., only about three minutes later, the RMS Titanic disappears under the surface of the ocean for good. The liner doesn't break. It just goes down as a whole piece. Of course, this can't be true. In April 1912, the Titanic was not only the largest ship in the world, but also the largest ship ever built. It's hard to believe that such a heavy vessel could have gone down without breaking. That's just impossible. Well, I mean, you can't blame the theorists. Before we found the wreckage, there were no other theories. Wait a minute, or were there? The day after the disaster, the survivors gave their interviews. They talked about what had happened, and some of them claimed that the ship had actually broken in two when it had been flooded. For example, Jack Thayer, a 17-year-old boy, outlined the sinking as he remembered it. And L.D. Skidmon drew a sketch based on his description. The picture clearly showed the ship breaking in half. But no one believed Jack or other witnesses. There was no evidence, so their claims were received with a grain of salt. But in 1985, things changed. First Breakup Theory That's when Robert Ballard found the wreckage of the Titanic in the depths of the ocean. When people saw the wreckage, it became clear that Jack and the other survivors had been right. The Titanic did indeed break in two when it sank. So it's time for a new theory. 2.15 a.m. The keel breaks, the starboard list eases, and the hull continues to bow and crumble. 2.17 a.m. The galley sections break off. The towers immediately drop under their own weight. The lights go out. The stern is pulled into the air. The bow breaks off and starts sinking. The aft is barely hanging on to the starboard side of the stern section superstructure. The stern section slowly lists over to port as it begins sinking again. It rises up one last time and pivots in a semicircle as it sinks. It all sounds pretty convincing, right? But people began to find plot holes in this theory. For example, the Titanic couldn't have held together until it reached such a high angle. The breakup would have had to begin much earlier. This only meant there was still a vast field for research and speculations. So people started to come up with their own possible scenarios. How about we look first at the ones no one likes? V-Break and Aaron 1912 V-Break According to the first breakup theory, the Titanic reached a high angle and the weight of its unsupported stern caused it to crack from the top down. But it's physically impossible. So are there any other ideas? In 2006, Roger Long, a naval architect, decided to research a so-called V-theory. 2.17 a.m. The breakup begins at a shallow angle, perhaps as little as 11 degrees. The upper structure fails and starts to crack. At this moment, only its double bottom is holding the Titanic together, but it starts to bend under the strain too, failing the ship. Water is pouring through the crack. It increases the weight in between the two sections, bending the Titanic the other way and pulling it into shape somewhat resemblant to the letter B. The upper decks get mangled and bent together. The bow heads for the bottom, and the stern is the last to sink. This theory has since been disproven many times, though. Roger Long believed it because the broken edges of the upper decks in the Titanic's bow section were all mangled and crushed. However, we have learned that it happened because of the so-called hydraulic downburst the force of the water crashing into the deck as the Titanic hit the ocean floor. Another V-break theory states that the bow had risen out of the water after the break. This theory was mainly peddled by one former Titanic enthusiast. But not only has this theory been proved to be physically impossible, 
due to the bow's incredible mass, it was also inspired by incorrect information. Remember Jack Thayer? Well, it was based on his sketch and the words of a couple of passengers. But the truth is, none of them had ever seen the Titanic break down like this. Jack himself even stated in an interview that the sketch was completely out of context to what he had actually seen. It was drawn by a passenger on the Carpathia, the ship that received the Titanic's distress signal and came to its aid. It couldn't be used as evidence. Now that we know this, let's move on to the theories that most people believe in. James Cameron's Banana Peel Theory Who hasn't seen the legendary movie about the Titanic, right? It became the leader of the 70th Academy Awards ceremony in the number of nominations and awards, and deservedly so. But did you know that James Cameron had been interested in the Titanic for many years and studied the ship's history? His books and research are very detailed, and he even came up with his own version of the events. It's called the Banana Split Theory, and this is actually what you could see in the movie. Here's how it goes. The Titanic reaches a 23 degree angle and fractures down to the keel. The double bottom acts as a hinge as the stern falls down. When the double bottom fails, the bow and the stern separate. The stern lists to port, standing vertically, and then begins to go underwater. This theory is the most scientifically accurate one, along with Roy Mengott's theory. Wait, who's Roy Mengott? Mengott Theory Roy Mengott was an engineer who came up with the most plausible theory for the time being. 2.17 a.m. The lights go out on the Titanic. At this moment, the ship is at an angle of 20 to 23 degrees. Suddenly, the vessel snaps in two just around the third funnel. It causes the stern to settle into the water. The keel fails first. The draft and lower hull are crushed and break apart. Water surges into the bow and stern of the ship through the huge cracks, causing the bow section to sink beneath the waves. The stern rises up to the angle of 70 to 90 degrees, and then it sinks too. This theory seems to make the most sense, but it's quite controversial. The survivors who saw the breakup stated that the stern had settled back with the bow completely missing. Mengott's theory, however, contradicts that statement while James Cameron's scenario takes this into account. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? The truth must be somewhere in the middle. My version. Now, as promised, I'll provide you with my version of the events. Well, it's not really my theory, more like a combination of Roy Mengott's and James Cameron's ones. I believe that James Cameron was right about the breakup. 2.17 AM, the ship is at a high angle the lights go out. Then it snaps into two pieces. The bow starts sinking. The double bottom is still attached to the stern for a minute or so. Once the double bottom fails, the two parts separate and the bow goes down. Then, as Mengot said, the stern rises up at a high angle and then it begins to sink vertically. It might have actually happened because the survivors stated that they had seen a clean break. This means it couldn't be hidden and they had also seen the stern staying vertically in the air for a long enough time, probably a few minutes before disappearing. Anyways, all of these are just speculations. Regardless of how the Titanic broke apart and sank, it was a great tragedy. It's already been 110 years since the Titanic collided with an iceberg and sank. Did you know that in 2022, the Blue Star Line Company is completing the construction of an exact replica of the Titanic. Called the Titanic II Liner, the ship will be sent sailing along the same route with 2,400 people on board. Let's hope that everything goes well for them. April 14, 1912. The dark night was filled with horrible sounds of a giant metal vessel breaking into two. The largest ship of that time collided with an iceberg that was on its way. The Titanic, one of the biggest stories of the 20th century that people still talk about. The starboard side of the giant vessel brushed up against the iceberg. It was 11.40 p.m. when things started going wrong. 
This iceberg caused enough damage for at least five watertight compartments in the hull to start filling with water. The crew immediately began a brief investigation to see if they could do anything and fix things. They had no one to rely on, all alone in the darkness of the cold night, far away from the land. The North Atlantic Ocean, around 400 miles south of Newfoundland, Canada. They needed time to figure out how to bring people to safety. They had some time, true, but not enough. If you watched the movie, you know the ship didn't plunge immediately after the icy doom had happened. The whole process lasted a good 2 hours and 40 minutes. But the situation was hard. There were 2,200 people to take care of, including crew and passengers. And things happening on the ship were chaotic. The chief designer, Thomas Andrews, soon realized they wouldn't be able to stay afloat. By midnight, the entire crew had begun preparing the lifeboats for launch. They had 20 boats with space for only 1,178 people, which was just a bit more than 50% of the people on board. The order was to get women and children to safety first. Crewmen were there to row and guide the boats. The scene over the next two hours gradually started escalating. The crew members had a task to wake up passengers and warn them something bad was happening. They wanted to place them into a fleet of lifeboats as soon as possible. At 12.15 a.m., some crew members sent out a distress signal. A steamship called Frankfurt was among the first ones that received the message and responded, but they were about 170 nautical miles away. Some other ships also got the message and offered their assistance, but sadly, They were too far away as well. At 12.20 a.m., the canard liner Carpathia got a distress signal from the Titanic and changed its course right away. They were 58 miles away at the time, and it would take them more than three hours to get there. 20 minutes later, the crew was lowering the first lifeboat. It was carrying only 27 passengers, although it had room for 65. Many of the lifeboats that were launched first were well below capacity. Crew members were worried, thinking the Davids wouldn't be able to hold a fully loaded lifeboat. And in the beginning, many passengers were just too afraid to leave the ship. They still thought Titanic was unsinkable and couldn't imagine the scenario that was going to happen one to two hours later. The crew was firing the first of eight distress rockets. Unsuccessful, no one was close enough to help. By 1.20 a.m., they lowered 10 lifeboats. Number 8 had only 28 people in it. One of the passengers on the number 10 was 9-week-old Melvina Dean. She would later become the last survivor who lived until 2009 and turned 97. It was 2 a.m. already. Three of the collapsible boats were the only lifeboats that remained on the ship. The bow of the vessel had sunk low and had tipped far under the surface. People around it could now clearly see stern propellers above the water. Crew members were lowering collapsible lifeboat D from the roof of the officers' quarters with over 20 passengers in it. As the ship's bow went under, the water was washing collapsible A from the deck Those 20 people were struggling because their boat was partly filled with water. As crew members were trying to release collapsible B, it fell. Before they righted it, the water swept it off the ship. 30 passengers still managed to find safety on the overturned lifeboat. At 2.17 a.m., the ship's wireless operator decided to transmit one last distress call. A minute later, the light on the ship finally went out. Titanic and all left on board plunged into darkness. The bow continued to sink, and the stern was rising higher above the surface, which placed great strain on the midsection. Horrible sounds were filling the night. Titanic, this massive, legendary ship so many people placed their hopes in and were excited about, broke into two between the third and fourth funnels. 
Reports would speculate it took about six minutes for the bow section to reach the ocean bottom. The stern settled back in the water before it rose again into a vertical position. It remained in this situation until it finally disappeared into the ocean. At 2.20 a.m., the stern apparently retained air inside and water pressure crushed it as it went down. The stern landed about 2,000 feet away from the bow. People consider the Titanic the fastest ship in the world. They thought it was unsinkable because four of its compartments could be flooded and that still wouldn't cause a critical loss of buoyancy. Its life was problematic since its beginning. While the ship was leaving port, it moved within a couple of feet of the steamer New York. It managed to safely pass by, which was a huge relief for all those worried passengers massed on the ship's decks. Titanic sailed off on the 10th of April. Its first journey was across the highly competitive Atlantic route. On the launch day, the Titanic became the biggest movable object in the history of humankind. 882 feet long, 92 feet wide. Not that big if you compare it with today's ships. The biggest cruise ship in the world today is Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas, which is roughly five times the size of Titanic. If you put that ship in a vertical position, it would be nearly as tall as the Empire State Building, which is 1,250 feet without antennas. But Titanic was a huge attraction back in its time. At one moment of their journey, they stopped in France, after which they made another stop in Ireland. Once the final passengers boarded, the massive ship set out at full speed for their final destination, New York City. Four days after the beginning of its journey, Titanic failed to divert its course from a huge iceberg, the story we all know about. Only 700 people survived and most of them were women and children. The night was extremely cold, one hour and 20 minutes after Titanic had gone down to the bottom of the ocean. Survivors weren't even sure someone was coming to save them. Finally, they saw the light. It was Carpathia coming towards them. They came for the people in the lifeboats. The crew brought them aboard and pulled a handful of other passengers out of the water. Many ships tried to contact Titanic a few hours after it sank. Their messages were never returned. Later, when there was an investigation of what really happened, they discovered the Leyland Liner California had been less than 20 miles away when Titanic was sinking. But the crew didn't hear the distress signals coming from Titanic because their radio operator was off-duty. Countries from both sides of the Atlantic were shocked and horrified when they heard details of what happened to Titanic. They decided to make changes to ship operations, rules that would help avoid such events in the future. They held the first international convention for safety of life at sea, where they adopted rules for every ship to have lifeboat space for each passenger on board. Also, lifeboat drills became mandatory. They also decided to establish an international ice patrol. Its main role was to monitor icebergs in the North Atlantic shipping lanes. Ships also needed to maintain a 24-hour radio watch. Titanic wasn't built alone. Because of the size of this magnificent ship and all the new equipment it required, it would have been too expensive as a one-off. So the team built the Titanic alongside two sister ships and both of them had eventful lifetimes. RMS Olympic came first. It was launched in 1910, and for a whole year was the biggest liner in the world. The Britannic was another sister ship that sailed for a while before it too ended down on the ocean bottom. But only Titanic became a legend and one of the most fascinating stories of modern history.